for a change. And I think our mics are coming on. I want to welcome everybody to this special meeting for the Trinity County Board of Supervisors. It is a special meeting agenda, July 26, 2017, and Supervisor Chadwick has agreed to lead us in the flag salute. Thank you. matters. These items include non-routine, non-controversial matters and are listed alphabetical by department. A member of the board or staff may request that an item be heard out of order. Since there's only one item, two items, one closed session, I'm not even going to bother today. Board of Supervisors, 1.1, continue from July 18, 2017, adopt a resolution that creates a Trinity County Cannabis Excise and Sales Tax and approved ballot language and ordinance to be voted on by the people of Trinity in the November 7, 2017 odd year general election cycle, which includes uniform district election law. There is an impact to the general fund. Who wants to start out? I already tried to start out last time and didn't get very far. You guys are the ad Yeah, I know. Um, I don't have any changes to what was presented and what the cleaned up version is. Bobby, I don't know if you do or not. Do you wish to Yeah, I have a lot to say and I'm really glad to see you all here. Um, before we get into the particulars, which there's quite a few that I think are unfair on the uh, ballot, no big surprise it's a special meeting and that none of you were allowed to talk. I'm going to go over a few definitions for you all, just because I think that sometimes things get lost. Civil servant, public servant, a person holding government office or job by election or appointment, a person in public service. I hope you all feel that we're serving you correctly. Supervisor Chadwick. Elected officials are charged with the honorable and vital role of representing the con constituents, that's you all, and making decisions that are best for them. The Ralph Brown Act. The grand jury has found that this board of supervisors with this county council has denied you 11 times last year. The urgency ordinance was conceived under the, the Brown Act curtain. It was illegally, de deceivingly put before us, just as this tax, the special tax in November, what revenue is going to come out of it That would, if we wait until June? And all of you would have a part to say, are you surprised? No. Have things changed? No. This is your room. You need to stand up for what is right. This board is out of control. You need to own this. This tax is unfair to the farmers, period. The general fund, why? Because we can choose where that general fund goes. There is no special money put aside for our, our law enforcement. They're the ones that have to implement. We, we just take more and more away from you. And you're taking it. I can keep talking if you want me to. I'm just wondering if you're done. And I'm not done by a long shot. I'll let somebody else talk. It'll be interesting to see how you decide to push this down their throats, just like the urgency ordinance. Should we just be clear? There is a public comment on this, so this is the opportunity to ask staff. Mm -hmm. Um, there's no generalized public comment, but there's comment on the specific item as right. and I'm sure you're aware of that. Um, and this is the opportunity to ask the staff for the ad hoc committee That's right. any, any questions. There wasn't an ad hoc committee. I was assigned to it. We did not meet. You and John came to my room on July 6th because Chairman Finley accidentally let me know that at 3.30 there was going to be a meeting. At 3.28, I called on the county phone requesting that I would be informed where the meeting was. You already had it on the agenda. 
you allowed me to make my list to go to the state to ask the questions. Don't look at me like you don't know. I have the list. I don't know what you're and then on July 6th, 3.30, the basement in my office, I share with John. I called him on the county phone at 3.28 and asked him, where is the meeting? And he said, oh, that's funny what you did with the phone, and hung up. And then you showed up in my room 10 minutes later. The first and only conversation that we had on this, and now it's before us. It's what, wrong. What, what did, what, when I answered my phone, do you know what it said? Naomi. The, the, call, the caller was Wendy Tyler. Sometimes it comes up, not Naomi. It's not my fault what the phone comes up. The right. fact of the matter is, you had one meeting at 3.30 that I honestly, found out about at 1.30, and then I wasn't invited. I asked you where it was. You left the room. I called at 3.28. Who, who told you up. about the meeting, Bobby? You <laughs> accidentally came in my Bobby, office. Bobby, I can assure you I don't do things okay, accidentally. Okay, okay, it wasn't accidental. You did not tell me where it was. I did not know. So at 3.28, I called you on the county phone, and you said, isn't that funny, and you hung up. And then you showed up 10, 15 minutes later with Margaret. You asked if I had concerns. I said yes. I went over my concerns. And I said, I'm going to the state, I'm going to the Cannabis Summit, I can ask these questions to the people there. Is there anything else you would like to task me with? No. All the time knowing it was coming before this board and these people and on short notice. And you know, it's just ironic that the grand jury report comes out. It's scathing. We need to have more transparency. This is, this is great. You want to know what, what the, the mission uh, statement is? With transparency and integrity, Trinity County works responsibly to create and maintain a safe and healthy quality of life for all citizens. Everyone here present that feels that this board has accomplished that, please raise your hand. <clears throat> and you want these same people to vote in November when it cost us $35,000 on the ballot. How many of you in the audience are going to vote to pass this tax after we pay a minimum on an off cycle $35,000. Can I see anybody who's voting for this? Yeah, that's what I thought. I have had so many calls and nobody, not one person supports, not only not, they don't support it, they don't support how it's crafted. No transparency. Shame on you, sir. Thank you, Supervisor. Can I ask a question of the second part of the ad hoc? Uh, sure. That would be... I think oh, Margaret. Sir. Yeah. Well, if, if I'm the non-existent part of the ad hoc. This isn't uh, elementary school anymore. So if you felt that there was a um, a second proposal or or something that you wanted done, why didn't you present us with, with that? First of all, it's not elementary school, and I'm aware of that. So backhanded slap is not taken. I talked to and commented to Chairman Finley on my concerns. I was never told on July 6th that this would be in the agenda. I was never told that it was coming up in the fall. I made myself available. Go back and watch the videos. How many times has Chairman Finley sat here in ad hoc and said, it's not on Bobby, I'm bad, we haven't met? Multiple times. And when was the not first Not once time? was I told that this was going to be a fall election. But you had the last meeting to persuade the other two members. Of they the never board. said it was coming on the agenda. I gave them an oral list of the things I did not like on July 6th. I wrote oh, down okay. my concerns When did you first respond? Bobby, let other people... I was responding to him. You cut me off. And then I started to speak and you cut me off about three minutes ago. I doubt it. Ago. Of course, you're correct. When was the first time you received a copy of this information? By Which email? information? The whole, the uh, uh, excise tax information. It was yes. it wasn't incomplete. That was the first first item that I come up with last year. When when was the email? Go ahead and look it up. I'm not going to look it up, John. It's irrelevant. We never had a meeting. You sent it to me. You sent it to to Margaret. Um, you guys asked me to to participate in. A meeting. I said I was going to be okay. at a convention. This is done. Let's get back to business. Yeah, but that's Thank you, Supervisor. I have a you, question for Okay, knock yourself out. Beyond what you just said, Bobby, is there 
given from last week's conversation we had here and some ideas that we floated out and it looks like they've been captured. Um, I think we were looking at some phasing of attacks. Is there any element here yeah, that you like Yeah, the whole to idea of the price per pound is ridiculous. These okay. farmers have no idea what their product's going to be. Okay. It could go through the floor, it could go through the roof. An easy percent, and it doesn't matter what part. It, a 10% in round numbers on $100 okay. is 10. Can, can, it would be really productive. That's all we're looking for is just for you to state that. What? Because these are just ideas that we openly discussed last week. So, and you didn't offer one any. flat tax on a percent. Whether it's okay, leaf, flower, or bud, that's cleans it up. If it's a thousand dollars a pound, they pay a higher amount. If it's ten dollars a pound, okay. they pay that's a less all, amount. That's, what this that's is about. equitable for no matter what state of the product going to market. When will that price be determined? It's a percentage. It's a percentage right. at and, the time when, it's sold. Do you want the the farmer to pay before it's sold? No, no, we're not asking them then to that's right. We're not asking them to we're do that. Asking. I'm yeah. just answering your question. Uh, so you so made a statement that we're asking the farmer to pay before it's sold. Uh, we're not. I asked we're you, not. do you want them to? You asked me no, when it was due. We're not now. I didn't say you were now. You asked me the question. I answered the question. Okay, Bobby. So, did you have a specific percentage in mind? Yeah, there should be a feasibility study done on it. I believe that same day that you came into uh, my room, at, I gave you a card <coughs> of a company that can do this very type of thing, HDL. You said you knew the people, you mm -hmm. had have lunch with them. Yeah, they go to all our meetings and they, uh, they so have So there's foods feasibility and, studies. Right. So we don't know what that is. We Can also ask? asked you to find out how much it would cost for the feasibility study. No, you, you never want. asked. Okay, that. fine. Keith? So the, um, since we're following, or this is proposed to follow the state format, obviously you must be furious with the state. Yeah. You know, find that totally irrational. Well, if we wait till June, I think all these questions can be answered and we can have public time and public input. It is their tax. It's not us implementing a tax on them. So you're aware, I think, that 148 is coming off the top. I think uh, Supervisor Groves has pointed out from the state already that's been deemed, right? Yeah, there's a lot of money already off the top. I agree. Okay. So this 148, and this was 12 bucks that I think is proposed here. Right. Did I read that correctly? I yeah. that. Plus 20. Can we keep it down? Thank you, Liz. No, she didn't. That's why you said Chris. Oh, okay. <laughs> um. So, and you did understand my whole discussion the last meeting, and I don't mean that to sound as condescending as it did, but that that when you do a percentage tax, the the expensive farmer, the high end farmer, gets hit harder than the low-end farmer who then be, be drive business towards the low-end. I'm sure that some of these farmers are going to have quality product and some of these farmers, those same farmers, are going to have things that aren't as good. And that's up to a lab to determine. And some of these farmers that are great uh, farmers are probably going to end up having to destroy some of their product before it even goes. And a flat tax is equitable, whether you're a good farmer that has had a bad year, or an excellent farmer, or a beginner luck. It's the same for everyone. It's equitable. So we did propose a flat tax. That's what I thought. Yeah, right, so I'm a little confused. I, I, no, it's a, it's a dollar amount. I'm saying that's a percentage considered amount. considered a flat tax, and I hear what you're saying is the percentage, so this is considered a flat tax versus a percentage. It's a dollar on a pound. I'm saying a percent. Right, I and hear it's, you. It'll be paid as the market dictates. Right. All right. I guess I have had my questions answered by her. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. And so we had asked that there was 
So there, I think we had asked that there was a, some idea of proposal of a phasing of attacks. Right. Or that you guys not have that. Yeah. That would be on page 15. Oh, did I miss it? No. Page 15 comment. No, 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 no. no. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking at this. We haven't made any change. There was just a. Uh, uh, phasing of tax, a question mark. That happened to be in public comment. No, and I think we, as a board, said, can you guys look at what, okay. what phasing of the tax would look like? Uh, our proposal. So I just want to make sure I'm not overlooking something. I mean, the, it, Keith has looked at, you've looked at, a, you have an idea on phasing of the tax? I do. Uh, I have, if you, I have some clarifications. I was about it. But not here to go for it. Um, do you want to go through some of the just the wording clarifications that I had okay. first? Yes. So we have ideas. So it'd be on the front page resolution um, on page two. It was what the voters would see. Um, so basically, we're making the same changes that we made in the actual ordinance part, just so everybody understood. So as we go down to the second line, an excise tax of point of sale by license as designated in California code, cultivation amounts of cannabis flowers, that would be dried cannabis flowers. And it would also be dried cannabis leaves. Right. Just so everybody's clear on that. And then the uh, the nursery sale would be uh, cannabis retail, as we cleaned up in the back one. I'm looking at Nate here to see if she's getting all this. Replacing nursery sale? No, nursery sale, uh, cannabis retail nursery sales. So not the, the dirt or shovels they sell. And only retail. Um, and then the next line, uh, where right after that, every distributor transfer the sale, the, the, it would be distributor slash manufacturer to make it more accurate. And then originating Trinity County of cannabis in uh, product, I believe is the term we used instead of flower. So that would be the cleanup on the, that page. The last um, sentence I think we use where it goes back to cannabis, please. Is that, does that mean dry from the beginning? Yes, please. Thank you. Yes. <coughs> Also, um, the second line from the bottom, Trinity County needs to be capitalized. And there's a line above that, and also it's another trade. And item B on page six, we you cleaned up for dry cannabis flowers. And it should have on the bottom should have dry cannabis dried also in there. Person who is engaged in business as dispensary, manufacturer, distributor, or distribution facility, or engaging in delivery of, I would say, wholesale cannabis. Okay. Um, and then underneath that, it says the initial tax rate for effective sale originating in Trinity County shall be $20 per pound for cannabis products. 
and then the next would be except for six dollars per pound for cannabis uh, dried cannabis leaves because everything else that's the only exception in the distribution level. So except for or accepting or with exception to I guess accepting I'll, I'll look at county council's much higher your qualified vocabulary than mine. Except for Uh, the next item on 3.29-060, next paragraph down. Um, the last line, uh, each business shall pay on or before the last day of the month following the close of each calendar year. Uh, I just changed that to a standard, what's done in alcohol and sales tax and everything else, that you have 30 days after the end of the quarter because you have time to file your applications and get your money in. So it would say each business shall pay um, on or before 30 days following the close of each calendar year, if that makes sense to calendar, you. Calendar, 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 calendar year quarter. Calendar quarter, excuse me, yes. Before 30 days, before 30 days, before 30 days, before 30 days, before 30 days. So most people in business know that that's the end of the quarters or hell. And on page 8, 3.29.140, uh, item C, we talked about increased tax rates in this chapter. Since we're not increasing tax rates, I think that could be removed as suggested. Public comment. If that's okay with council for you. Okay, those are the, the cleanups I have. I have some fundamental changes that I uh, would like to make a pitch for. You're going to use the uh, markup for your pitches? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the markup Thank you. for your pitches. So basically, we look at um, $12 on the 148 is $160 a pound. 12 of 160 is 7.5%. So uh, I, I thought that basically you would have a, it would, would make sense is you have a consistent uh, on the cannabis leaves. So I would uh, say that we drop down to 450 per pound. Okay. So. Because that would be, it's, it's, it's over 7.5, I think it's 8.5 or something, but it's a more consistent. Yeah, that would bring it in line with the 7.5. Right. Okay. Do you have a problem? Just repeat it, please. So, 12 of 160 is 7.5%. So, 6 of 44 is 12 something percent. So, dropping that down to 450 would get that closer into that 7.5% range. So, 450 a pound for, for dried flat, uh, leaves uh, seems to be more equitable to me. And then what I felt, because we did have discussion, people are getting started this year and having a little difficulties and a little bit of relief, uh, even though this is a minor part of the tax issue. You know, again, 8%. The, uh, I would be fine, and it's up to the other parts of the board to start a new number uh, after uh, 3.29. 050, maybe 0 0.055, where uh, in calendar year 218, I'll tax. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so I'm on page six. Thank you. Now you're back to six. All right. So but this is actually a new paragraph. So it's under taxes imposed after. Got it. Okay. So I'm, I'm suggesting we put one in between 0 0.50 and 0 0.60. Okay. Um, and that's in 2018 calendar year, all taxes will be collected at 50% of the above number. And there'll be no taxes collected on type 1Cs. Right. Okay. 
And then in 2019, we go to full implementation of 3.29.5 with an exemption with, in the alcohol industry, we call a small producer's tax credit so that type 1 C's with especially called cottages would, <coughs> would apply and get a 50% discount on all taxes. But once they apply, showing that we're one a 1C. Right. So on their tax form, they would say, you owe $10, I'm a 1C, so I get $5 off, my tax liability is fine. And that would give some relief for the small small farmers um, and all those you know, other industries. Fifty percent, and then no taxes collected on Type One Cs. Yeah, that's for the first year. For the first year, calendar year two eighteen. That will be help a little bit in people getting started. That works for me. Yeah, that doesn't sound that all reasonable. And then, so I did um, on the item three point two nine. Point one one, which is page seven under the penalties. I I added another paragraph. Um, if if taxes are not paid within six months, which would be actually seven because you have thirty days after quarter, a temporary hold will be put on the cannabis permit. If not paid in one year, a licensee's permit will be pulled and parcel cannot um, be licensed until the taxes are paid off. So, if taxes are not paid within six months, so that would be six months late, which would actually would be 10 months, because you would have the first month, you would be six months late on the first month, which would be <coughs> nine months total. Uh, there would be a temporary hold per on permit if not paid after one year, so it ends up being a year and a quarter, uh, then the licensee's permit will be pulled. And, the and then, then, the, then the parcel cannot uh, be licensed until the taxes and penalties are paid off. Even if the property is sold? Yeah, because there's a, there's a liability. I understand. Uh, just like if you don't pay your income taxes, they come and take your stuff. I understand. It just you know, puts, your, puts another tax. burden on the tax collector. It does. <laughs> and, and it's not to take people's property. This is to give people incentive to pay their taxes. Yeah. Can you this is on the section 3.29.050? And then it would be just a new a number four or number two. Uh, so that's my... Um, I think that's everything that I've quickly saw. You have a problem with that the last um, one. I'm not crazy about it, but... Uh, I'm well, still going to think about okay. it, but I, I see where he's going with it. Mm -hmm. I do have a question on... Uh, Keith, were you done? Yes, I, okay. I'm, I'm done with all the mind notes that I can see. The 3.29, I don't remember what... Uh, this is pretty much the next uh, item after... We send notices for other taxation. Why would we not send a notice, even if it's just certainly it wouldn't be a notice that expressed the exact amount of your bill? Don't um, we send a, a notice for uh, business tax? Well, we send one yeah, for property so tax for sure. Well, come on, come on up, tax assessor, Get over there. Um, since you're getting the brunt of this. So for delinquencies, it depends on the type of tax, but um, for I mean just for the bill itself. For okay. the bill itself, we would, my understanding and what our counterparts are doing is that there is a notice that would initially go out okay. that, you know, and um, we don't have, we wouldn't have all the inner workings laid out just yet, yeah. but as far as, for instance, if, if I'm made aware from the planning department that so-and-so as a business now, then we would add them. And I'm assuming we would do it similar to some of what we were doing with TOT, mm -hmm. and that we'd send out notices quarterly so okay. that it's their friendly reminder. 
in regards to delinquency we typically do that as a courtesy and most others um, they we I try to send them out extra above and beyond what's required but this is kind of falling under suit with that I would assume the same way and that they um, if at the point if the way that the resolution is written right now um, I would assume that we would do the same and notice that you're at the point where we're about to place a lien we would do a notice of intent to file a lien and that mm -hmm. typically that um, the majority that encourages folks to pay at that time so I'm assuming that we kind of in, in for consistency say that we follow the same thing in regards to that but the uh, and, and Margaret maybe this is where you jump in I'm just um, it, it states the tax collector is not required to send any of these notices so I wouldn't want to be a different tax collector 10 years from now and they choose not to send anything out I'm not sure notice why I would I would say that in, in the event that I would I would say that that needs to stay the same as far as for if there's an intent to file a lien that that's going to be consistent before I file a lien we're giving you notice you have 30 days to pay and that that should I, I, I hear you and I agree with you as well as send an initial bill hey this is your bill for the first half of the year, or however it's going to get designed, but we need to change the language so we know notification does go out in this verbiage. What is the current ordinance that you follow, and can that be referenced in this? We um, according there's revenue and taxation, but most of them are specific to the type of tax, and so if um, I mean that's good business practice that it's going to need to be sent out in regard if we're going to file a lien that we need to send out some sort of notice that there's I mean we could put okay, but that's not Margaret uh, yeah. I need Margaret <laughs> no sorry no, I understand your question and your question is whether um, if it is the board's intent to have these notices do we want to change this the answer is yes so we just say is required is that all we have to do to change uh, maybe yes I would say initial notice or initial something to indicate that there'll be one notice sent out not multiple notices. One notice for initial regular billing, and certainly the practice of notification if people are behind, like you do in other categories. And it's it's called it's a notice of intent to file lien, which is what I do with with others. So whether that's no matter the tax, it's a notice of intent to file a lien. It's just a different type of notification, but there's a notification that's received. Sure, and that one is statutory. Mm -hmm. They will get if you're going to get a lien on your property, regardless of what base the base of the tax is, you will get notice of this. This is for you a delinquency notice on a tax bill is what we're referring to here. Mm -hmm. And if the initial bill goes out, if the board's pleasure is to also have a delinquency bill go out before that notice of intent to lien goes out, then we can add that in here. Okay. That sounds good. It's it's just is there current code that the notice of lien there there must be code or an ordinance that we can follow. It's, well, we can just address it here. Yeah, and if we, we follow, reference an ordinance, that would help us and back us up. Not ordinance per se, but I'll follow revenue and taxation code, code okay. and revenue and taxation code says best safe as okay, far as that's the. Even better. Not for it does not state for delinquency. It does state for no for intention of filing liens. So that's okay. pretty much across the board for if you're going to file a lien on someone, then there needs to be notification. And the notification there can be besides the bill going out, there can be a second notification. That's what you're asking. Yeah, my main concern was at least a notification of the bill, which is in the current, as it's written here, is not required. I'd like to see that a bill does go out. Or, you know, the way you do with COT or some of the other categories you work with. I, I will say the feds never send you anything, but the state sends you an email. So remember, it's the end of a quarter. Please go to site X and pay your sales tax, alcohol tax. Which is very handy to have. Mm -hmm. it, it, it reminds you to then go fill your form out, and then you fill your form out, and then you have 30 days to, or by the end of the month, to send your check. Okay. What wording and are you satisfied? Yeah, just notification of the bill. And however, you do hard copy or email. You may be switching to email for those other folks you collect tax on. I don't know what your plan is, but. I would like notification. So, like, so my recommendation would be it would be under 3.29.090. The treasurer task player is not required to send a delinquency notice to any person. And that will be for the bill. Because you're asking to have a bill be sent. Yes. Okay, so we will take that out so that they will be required to send to the bill. <coughs> and if I understand Terry correctly, in any delinquency, issue you first send an intent before delinquency happens 
said. Do I understand? Right. It, it's it's considered a courtesy for the extra notices, but as far as an intent, yes, we do send always send notice that there's a notice of intent to file complaints. Okay. Mm -hmm. But we have to be careful that the bill is actually generated by the business. Terry doesn't generate the bill. No, I know she's, and maybe the bill is, I'm just using what's here. In the business bank. says that we made That's correct. 100 pounds. Right, or we sold. We, we sold 100 pounds. Point of order. Yes. May I ask, um, how are you treating license holders in this case that wouldn't own the property? So would you still put a lien on the property owner? Yes. That's what they do in Humboldt. Fine. With um, that's really not a point of order. We can get into that a little bit later. But. Anything else? So that was your wording that you wanted to change as to. Yeah, I'm not really clear on it. Yeah, the treasurer tax collector is not required to send a delinquency notice to any person subject to the provisions of this chapter. So we're moving our other notices or bills. Right. And for clarification, do we need to stay? about the intent to for a leader. That is in the state code. Okay, got it. So that takes care of the bill, the bill notification to go out. I understand you're not listing the amount they owe you. You're just sending a form or a note, please submit payment kind of language. But if, if I'm, I'm sorry, which number? 3.29.090. Sales tax on your winery. Would the state come in and steal your property, or do you have the right to bankrupt out there? Um, they would have a right to put a lien on my property. And um, yeah, absolutely, they have a right to put a lien on my property. But you have the right to bankrupt it out, right? I'm not a tax lawyer, so I, I don't know when. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this sounds like you're just stealing people's property. Yeah, I mean, I, it sounds like you, what you're doing is that you're putting property tax on the on somebody who's selling cannabis. And I don't see how that's kosher. I don't see where you get that on. Well, you're putting a lien on the property. I mean, if you don't pay. And John, I can assure you we don't need anybody's property. Or do we want it? Yeah. We got a few questions from Weaverville. Um, so is there other businesses that say you are an LLC and you were taxed through the county, that you would, if I sold that business with a piece of property, that it would follow that business? Is there a precedent set in this county where that would happen as well? If the if the property owns owes money, yes. The, yeah. No, if an LLC owns a property, 
right. the LLC is taxed, the property, the, if I sell my property that I own. And if you haven't paid your taxes on that yeah. property, Not the also. property, I'm talking about the business taxes. Property taxes, yes, but business taxes. Other businesses in this county that have the same precedent that you're proposing right now. We do have right now, if, if we put liens on, on property, which, uh, yes, we do have that. I feel like through LLCs you can, you know, like, buy one and buy a bowling alley, say, you know, they had some tax issues through their business, the property's not going to have taxes on them. I understand how that works. But, um, you were also commenting about the 7.5% of the total tax, $160, you changed right. it to $4.50. Supervisor Chadwick proposed a flat rate, or I guess not a flat rate, but a percentage of pounds sold, which if you're involved in this business. A sales tax base, yeah, value added tax is what she's. Why was her um, comment not uh, given consideration as much as your comment was? You know, you proposed it, everyone said, yeah, you talked about it. No one talked about her comment. And as a grower, being in this business for almost 14 years, the prices went from $4,000 a pound down to $500. After everybody starts growing all the weed, they're going to grow this year in Humboldt and Trinity County. We don't know what the price is. So charging us $12 on a hundred pound or a hundred dollar pound, possibly five years from now, is not going to be fair. So uh, I propose that a definitely a percentage of what the market value is now. So if you want $12 now, make it the pound goes for you know 500 to a thousand dollars. Make it a percent that equals that $12. That way, when it goes down, we're paying a fair rate. Because you know, $160 of a hundred dollar pound, no one's gonna be working for that business. Well, is uh, you weren't at the last meeting, correct? No, I wasn't. I was for a little bit, but then everything got crazy. So, no. so uh, I'll reiterate uh, what went on in that tax. There's a value added tax is, is a reason there's nothing irreasonable about that tax, except I just I'm sorry, I have so 40 seconds. Oh, no, you're talking, okay. I'm talking, okay. so. Yeah. so. It, I it's know it's a the clock when you're yeah. So, if if you had, and I use the case of alcohol, seven dollars of a half a gallon of alcohol is is tax. Yeah. So, it, if on a ten dollar bottle of booze, that tax is very heavy, the low uh, producer. Yeah. On a high end, seven dollars on a fifty gallon jug is less of a tax. So what you do is you give incentive for people to buy better. Yeah, I guess the point uh, that I was so making is no feasibility study has been done to figure out that $12 will be good in the future. It won't be. I've seen the numbers. It's well, be high. If, if the 12, I mean, honestly, if the 12 is going to kill you, then the 148, you're done, right? Yeah, but anything extra is extra. You know, it's all extra money. That's, that's yeah. what I think. I think living in a community like this, people don't, you know, we're kind of in the wild west, we don't like to pay taxes. So let's make it a percentage so it's fair. So I got 30 seconds real quick. You guys are proposing a tax on distribution. You're proposing a tax on manufacturing. You're proposing a tax on all these mechanisms that we don't have in Trinity County. Why would you guys put the tax before coming up with a permanent ordinance that actually tells us what we're gonna do? I know you're laughing, but we haven't heard anything about this. So if I'm opening a distribution thing, how am I going to vote on what I'm going to be taxed if I don't know how that's going to look? That was the most important comment. So if you comment on that. One, one other thing is, um, if you can guarantee that our prices are, are the cost of our staff will still be the price it is now or lower in three or five or six years, and, and it won't cost us any more to process these items or do anything, that would be terrific. Um, our county, our cost of running the county, of course, will go down in the future year. Can you go up? Well, no, he's, he's saying that, that if the price of cannabis goes down, our, our cost for no, we're running, running, running our you. county we're will here, go down. We're taxing us, we're not here just to pay for you. What I'm proposing is just be fair to us. Be fair to the growers, because we're the ones, honestly, in this community who are making money. We're yeah, the, only we're the, we're the ones that have to process and make money. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just think just be fair to us, you know. What Bobby proposed as a supervisor, she is saying, let's look at this. So did Keith Gross, Supervisor Gross. You guys took into consideration his $4.50 and you both said, yes, that sounds good. When Bobby said what she said, everyone out here, I guarantee, agreed with it. You guys didn't say anything about it, and maybe she wrote it down, but I just think that should be, a, that is a more fair way of going about it, and I think the community, the growing community, for sure will agree with me on that. 
he's talking about an adjustable tax. Right. And, and, and I'm not guaranteed that I can even enforce this tax or permitting if the price of cannabis goes down and we have less revenue coming in to issue permits for processing. Again, not to blind or like, I think I feel like you're making the situation more complicated than it is. You guys are proposing a tax. You're proposing a tax right now. You have the, you know, the ability to come up with what you want to come up with. If you're coming up with a $12 tax, why not come up with a 1% tax or whatever 1.5% tax that equals that $12 on average per pound right now? And if the price changes down the road, whether or not it pays for your salary or everyone else's salary, who cares? Us as business owners have to be able to still produce our product and not have to pay too much in taxes. And you don't want any services. You don't want. No, I never said that. I'm not. You're blind to the issue that I just said. I, I, I brought up what I just said because you didn't didn't take her comment into consideration. I'm not saying I don't want services. Again, that's blinding the issue. It's not blinding the issue. I'm saying just just look at what she said and maybe do a feasibility study and see what's fair. You know, I know that you guys didn't, and you should. You know, you should so that we know as growers it's fair for us. We know as everyone in the community to pay for services and to pay for all that. That's fair too. Yeah, I took way too much time. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon, Liz McIntosh from Junction City. Um, I really, I went, I took the clean copy and printed it out, and went through and you know did my own tracking of changes, and way too much for me to fit it all in here. I do really appreciate some of the changes that um, were offered by Supervisor Morris and Groves. Um, when it comes to the penalties and the the enforcement. I liked where you were going with it, but then you kept all the other stuff in, and I would agree with other commenters. I've been searching our county code in the last day since this came out, um, and I don't see where there is any other tax on any other business. And when you're talking about booze, I'd much more prefer that you talk about your vineyard, because that's the agricultural product. Not, I don't know if it does those scales also in regard to that. I kind of get what you're saying about encouraging higher quality. But I see that the state's done that. And of course, we're all recognizing that we are up against a wall as small farmers when it comes to what the state, and I agree, anything more is just more. And so, um, but not that I don't want services with something, just something that I can believe in instead of fight against. And so um, right now, if we were all to accept that the average price per pound on the market right now is $1,200 and that the average price per leaf, I probably have a better idea than you do, although you roll your eyes at me. But $150 per pound um, of leaf, let's say, you are at 1%. I'd probably be a lot happier with this if you said, let's go with 1% and keep it there. Um, if this was six months from now and we had these things and we had the certainty that we're asking you guys for, um, with the fees, or the fee study itself, the feasibility study, the permanent ordinance, all those things, all of this might be a lot more digestible. But um, what Supervisor Chadwick said, a lot of us really, really feel. I was sitting last night watching a video from November 3rd of 2015. This was only five days after the legislative advocate from RCRC came here, and this conversation came up. And you guys were going to task then CAO um, Tyler with coming back to the next meeting with um, what's going on in other counties around us as far as fees, the program itself, and the tax. And that didn't happen. We don't have any of that with this. I don't know what you're basing things on. I don't know why you chose um, the way you're going about it. I know you said it's not harvested, but harvest tax, but I still don't, it still says harvested, not sold on the front page. But I don't know why you chose that instead of certain other things. And, and I'd love to continue this dialogue and conversation um, but I just can't see any way how we could support this before all these other things. And frankly, for my own personal self, I'm going to say I'm going to do everything I can to watch it die in its current form that you've proposed today. Thank you. The, the eye roller was the price, Liz. It's difficult. It is difficult. It's so, really so, Liz, again, you haven't come with a solution. So I have a couple of copies. My printer cropped we, out. We could go with a humble. <laughs> 20,000 an acre for mixed life. You could, and as CAO Tyler was saying in that think? meeting, we need to be um, We could go we with Sonoma County and go 100,000 an acre. And they killed small farms. Is that what we want? And, and this, I appreciate your exemption for the small farms, the smallest. And this way. is actually designed to protect small farms. I don't believe it is. Um, and and well, I'd love to see and more And as you said it. last time, you're not an expert in this, so 
I think it's but clear. See, that's where it's hard. We are in the industry, and when this came about on March 7th, there was a speaker that came before you and said, we'd like some stakeholders to be a part of this. And John, you said no, and then you said, we'll be back at the next meeting for input from the public. I want to be educated. I want to understand. I'm sure I can speak for almost everybody in the room, but that's not happening. And what was also said on November 3rd, 2015, was you said that you don't know if you could support or enact an ordinance without a tax first, and you all agreed. And so we know this is what you want. This is not what we're ready to accept. Thank you. Okay, Grace from Lewiston. Um, one of the things that's never been addressed, it's been asked a couple of times and never been addressed, is why does this have to be on the November ballot? It's obviously not ready. It's illogical to try to force it through unless you need it to be on the November ballot for whatever reason. It's more logical for it to be on the June ballot. Um, the June election would be more conducive to a countywide election, which is this, what this would be. And I don't think the, the November election, I think it's special districts. It's not countywide. So it would actually save you money not to expand it just for this. Also, there seems I'm confused because um, as the chairperson said, you're talking about the services that will need to be paid for the county workers to do this. That's what the permit process pays for. That's what the permit no, no, process I, pays I, for. I will interrupt if it's okay. No. Okay, I'll, go ahead. I'll finish. Right. Um, the permit process, you are, supposed to pay, you are supposed to charge what it costs you to provide the service. That is not what this tax is. This tax is revenue. It's revenue. So if you're not, if you're saying that this is going to pay for the services, then you're saying that you're not going to have the people pay for permits. That's not what you said. Well, what you said was this tax needs to pay for the services, service, and if the period. service, yeah, that, no, yeah. it no, goes, no, not. it goes it's into the general fund. fund. Right. Yeah. So if it wants to go to the sheriff, Good. then you designate a percentage to the sheriff. If you wanted to go to court code enforcement, you designated a certain percentage to code enforcement. If you're going to tell us general fund, and we're supposed to go, okay, no. Because that's not what happened in the past. We see it happen in the state. We see it happen in everything. Cal Fire tax went to the general fund. Even Cal Fire didn't like that. So uh, that's not working. And that line isn't going to work. And people get that. And that's why people don't like this. It's shoved down their throat. Like the man said before, you're handing them a baby and going, here, take care of it. And I don't know that I would take that as a, a euphemism, but it's kind of like that. You're just going, boop, here, take it. There's no take it or leave it. There's no discussion. There's no ins and outs. It's shoved down our throats once again. And it did not come before the people the way it should have. And you have plenty of time. And you repeatedly said during your ad hoc um, reports, my bad, uh, I haven't done anything. So it's, it's my bad, my bad, my bad, boom, here it is. That's not how it works. And so uh, we're not going for it. And there's no reason for this to be on the November ballot, unless you're worried about not holding the elections officer during the November ballot. And you should probably worry about that. Thank you. Thank you, Kay. Good afternoon, Tom Malenko, Douglas City. Uh, philosophically, I'm an anarchist. Uh, I'm also philosophically a nudist. Here I am wearing clothes talking to a government body. I don't like taxes any more than anybody else. Um, but this one, I think, does what it's supposed to do. There's no denying, nobody can come up here and say, cannabis cultivation has not exacted a cost on this county. It has. In almost every facet of the county, there's no denying that fact. The county has responded to our requests. Can we have an emergency ordinance? Here we go. Can you work on a permanent ordinance? There's a lot of other things for this board to be doing, and you have focused a lot of time and attention. Have you gotten us all the results we need? No. Are you working hard? Obviously. So, a tax is appropriate. This tax, 7.5% of what the state is charging, is not going to make or break anybody. If this makes or breaks anybody, you're going to be broken by the state. I'm sorry to talk to you. I know you guys know it, but some people don't. Uh, 
part of why the state is putting a $148 tax and not a 14% tax is because of this plummeting price on the per pound. Nobody can sell a $100 pound because you have to pay $148 in taxes. Maybe you can sell a $150 pound, but that's making $2. So there's a reason for these dollar amounts, and I understand that, and I think this dovetails nicely with it. So I, I support the dollar figure. I'm all for dropping the, uh, the leaf price by a couple of bucks. I think that's a great idea, too. Um, I also think November is important. And the reason I think that is because when everybody, when all the licenses from the state start coming out in January, and the first 10 distributor licenses that come out are going to be up here. And they say, who's a licensed cultivator? They say, I am, I hope. And they say, great, let's make a deal for 2018. Here's what I'll pay. And I'll say, OK, here's my cost. That looks good. I can afford it. I'll take that price for 2018. Then we come to June and there's another tax added on that I wasn't aware of in January. Guess who's going to pay that tax? I'm not going to go back to the distributor and say, oh, by the way, you got to pay me an extra six or 12 bucks a pound. Yeah, I'm going to have to pay that tax out of my end of the profit. So I'd rather go into the January marketplace knowing what we're going to pay in total. I think that makes sense. The tax makes sense. Um, so I would encourage you to support this. As for a feasibility study, that really applies to fees. Uh, this is a tax. So anyway, I'm going to support Thanks. Tom, I have a couple questions. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Um, what revenue do you see happening by passing it in November and collecting on it that would not happen in June? I don't think you're going to see a lot of revenue. Maybe you'll see okay, a couple that, hundred thousand. I'm trying to figure out your last statement saying that you want to know what's going to happen in January. That's why it's November. But the fact of the matter is it's based on 2018 sales. 2018 sales don't start until way later in the summer. And that would be done by speaking to a ballot in June where everybody has time to work on it. You'd still know what's going on. There, what revenue change is there? Well, depending on how, if, if the final regs reflect the draft regs we've seen, new licensees will be able to bring in That's with right. them inventory. That's what right. new licenses? So say I get a license on January 15th. I'll have two weeks, according to the draft regs, to enter track and trace. And I can enter it with any cannabis I have in my inventory. So if I have, say, 100 to, pounds. How many days do you get to um, roll that over going forward into 2018? So you get to go six months back from the date of your license. So theoretically, I could bring a whole October, November harvest with me into January. Um, that's draft rates, but I, I'm kind of anticipating that's what they'll do. Do you already have a permit? Okay, Tom. Okay. Um, Tom, thank you. Okay. I'm Lisa Wright from Lewiston. Um, I spoke last meeting and I'm, I'm going to continue with that same line of, of discussion. I'll give you a little bit more on my background. I have a master's in public administration. I worked for the federal government under Reagan and Bush, I'm dating myself, um, specializing in government self-funding programs uh, as a financial analyst. I also then moved to back to the Midwest, raised a family, got involved in state local um, government and economic development. I was an economic development director, chamber of commerce director for about eight years um, in Iowa. And one of the things that is kind of a cardinal rule is with the retention and the recruitment of new industry, you don't impose a new tax on them. In fact, it's usually contrary where you're providing incentives to new industry to come into your community to create jobs and additional wealth. When I look at Trinity County, it has so many jewels and opportunities, but there isn't really any program in place that encourages economic development and really the creation of new wealth and new jobs. I think this new industry of cannabis has the opportunity to do that, but I hate to see it come out of the gate it's kind of stalled because of all of the taxes being imposed. And I understand the state tax is um, a given and that yours is a small percentage, but I don't think it's a good approach to economic development. I think if you truly believe as a board in supporting the economy and the growth for Trinity County, you would not be advocating a tax on a new industry. Um, 
I also have to question a little bit about the equitable nature of this tax you're proposing. I haven't been able to find anything on a ta similar tax on any other agricultural products that are coming out of Trinity County. So if, if, if I'm wrong, maybe you can educate me, or Keith, you might know. Yeah, are you alcohol. taxed by the county? I've brought it forward several times. Yeah. And you're taxed by the county? No. Not by the county. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll explain it when you're done. Um, do you tax on timber? I don't know what yes. other type of, you do have a county tax on timber? Let's is it county? It yes, the money goes to the county. No, I need to be educated by you if you have the information. I could not find any county taxes on other agricultural products that you were using as a basis. Money goes to the county on timber. So it's collected another way, but it comes to us. It's collected through the state or the county. You need to do your homework and, and go to the Board of Equalization. I don't know what they're called. No, I, I want to know what the county is imposing as a tax on other agricultural products okay. because what I'm trying to do is establish is that it's not you're not treating this particular agricultural product which it is as designated by the state equitably with other and if it's going to be a, task, a state tax fine alcohol is a state tax does alcohol have a county tax I believe the answer was no so please I'd like you to take a look at alternatively looking at number one formalizing the permanent ordinance and allowing this industry to stabilize. The urgency ordinance was supposed to be a pilot right at 500. You have recognized, and it's, it's widely noted, there's probably 3,500 to 5,000 farms. Why limit it? Secondly, I would like to see the county work really as leaders in economic development. I haven't seen anything where we're trying to recruit or even retain industry. What we're doing is losing a lot of young people, attracting older people that might retire here, but don't really contribute to the economy and its growth. Also, I would, I would encourage you to consider something of a task force that could potentially bring all of the uh, local businesses together to create a Trinity destination. We need to help the county to increase, help, the county can help the farmers increase the value of their product per pound by having people come here to buy it. Create it as a destination, working with the restaurants, the hotels, the wineries. We could create an overall experience which is much easier to charge a higher price than trying to go to distribution and compete with the Bay Area and the Valley in terms of the price, which would be a way that the county could benefit longer term from additional sales tax as well. If you wanted to come back okay. when the industry had stabilized, then I believe that you could look at um, you know, taxation, as long as you're being equitable with other agricultural products. Okay, thank you very much. Do you have any questions for me? Or you no. have a comment, Keith? <laughs> you don't? Thank you. Okay. Hi, Terry Moe, Instruction City. And, wow, definitely all over the place today on this one. Uh, my thing is, is I think uh, personally, I won't speak for anybody else, um, I think that when we started this a few years ago, I think the idea was to give something back to our actual county so we can improve the schools, the roads, law enforcement, and make our community just a better place to live. Um, I know nobody wants to pay taxes. We come from an industry, nobody's been paying taxes, really. So this is new for everybody here. It's uh, you know one of those things that everybody's scared of. Uh, probably no correct, complete answer here. I think I think transparency is obviously the thing that I shoot for first. I think Keith brought up something that I truly had no idea. I thought it been very. Uh, it's been resonating understanding of how the better quality alcohols don't pay as much tax. The cheaper quality is the relationship. And so I've been trying to gather that understanding because. I think that our county should be producing a high quality level and based on that kind of parameter, I don't know how it works, but I think that that made sense because I, I think major volume of garbage gets taxed high because it doesn't matter. Super well-crafted hand on quality, small farm crafted products are taxed in a different way. And I think that I understood that a little bit from the thing that you were talking about. I'm not complete understanding, but it made a little sense on that. Um, I think with one thing for sure here, I think everybody in this room probably is in agreement with this, that taxing this without it being tied into really a permanent ordinance is a little tricky. I think everybody's here is just trying to get on a permanent idea and get a little more permanence to it. So I think that, that uh, I mean, I could be wrong, but I feel that it's permanent ordinance is something we've all kind of been asking for and shooting for for a while. And I think that the taxation behind it is 
probably tied into that because no joke, the market has changed drastically. It's changing as we sit here today. This is, it's, it's, it's not pretty, it's very ugly. Um, so I think that um, everyone here is fearful, like I am myself, that any imposed tax or fee could be just crucial because the marketplace is deteriorating. Now, granted, that's the black market, and, and, and there are two different markets, and they are diverging. But as we are transitioning, and we all are transitioning from a black market, there's a way to say we're not, there's a way we're doing, we have to have some sort of, I don't want to say amnesty or leeway, but I think saying that you have to pay this amount when we don't know what we're going to get, I hear that a lot and I feel that too, that's tricky. So that's why I said just the open conversation here and, and talking more about the thing that you had talked about and understanding it, you know, and, and getting a better grasp on taxes because no one has been paying them on our product. So we have to learn, and it is a learning lesson none of us want to deal with, but we, we do need to learn this, and, and that's why I said I appreciate you talking about this and, and letting us discuss it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Hi, Stephen Mencken from Hayford. I just wanted to start off with a quote I found from the University of Kansas Center for Community Health and Development. When you're revitalizing neighborhoods, communities, or rural areas, here tax incentives might be used to attract industry or commerce and local jobs, to develop mixed income housing, or to bring in, rehabilitate, and anchor an institution, theater, museum, sports facility, to attract residents and businesses. In a rural area, you might employ tax incentives to create environmentally friendly tourism, bicycle touring, farm stays, etc., to encourage farming or to attract clean industrial operations. And it just seems like you guys are trying to opposite like they're talking about giving tax breaks and, and, and actually giving money and grants to small businesses they're talking about the county putting down money for farmers to do things like grow food with their crop a lot of people's cover crops are actually medicinal and can be sold or given to local food banks so why aren't we having a percentage tax where there's programs so you grow 500 pounds a thousand pounds of food and give it to the training county food bank or if you give this much of your alfalfa to these farmers and have tax breaks to encourage sustainable communities and promote other agriculture. In addition, I don't like the general fund. I want a percentage to go towards two things. Uh, revitalizing damaged areas destroyed by our industry, because you guys have seen them more than I have. I want like a percentage, 25% of this tax goes towards revitalizing Trinity County. Want another 25% to go towards a, towards a research institution. How we can make our product be best and make it so that it doesn't matter what you guys tax us down the line, everyone wants it, is through a research institution. We had a guy who's four years of research, and in my eyes it's pharmaceutical research, and not only knows what they value their research development at, because Fish and Wildlife showed up with our district attorney when he had a permit, you guys heard this and flushed it down the drain. That's four years of information. The founder of the internet said data is the most valuable thing in the world. Data. That's what Google believes, that's what the most powerful people believe in data. And it seems like you guys crafted this with little to no data. Margaret, I looked at her background, Browns Act, community stuff, no tax. She's done not a tax lawyer. You guys are not tax attorneys. You guys haven't sat down with anyone that's implemented taxes anywhere. Last meeting, someone showed up who helped other people in other counties and said, this is a bad tax. Said Sonoma did it bad, Santa Rosa did it well. You guys ignored what he had to say. It just seems like you're shooting from the hip. And frankly, like there's no permanent ordinance. It's take, the, the permit process is going slower than mud. I, I know people that have been waiting for six, seven months to get permitted. So these things need to get fixed. And there needs to be language in there that specifies this much is going here, this much is going there. The general fund doesn't work for me. Because like Bobby said, law enforcement needs money. Okay, I'm down to give law enforcement a percentage of it. But they should know this is how much they're getting. And this is what they're getting this for, to push bad actors out to clean up Trinity County. But general fund, how do we know we're not going to turn around? We're not going to see raises for the board of supervisors, or for the county council, or for the county clerk don't. There's no, and, and you guys have said things to other people, and granted, I'm new to the political process here, but I've heard time and time again, they'll say something, they'll do this. They'll say something, they'll do this. Mr. 
sure to wind it up. I, I actually read, I'm pretty sure in your special meetings, you cannot limit our time. I will try to wind it up, but you can't limit our time because it's a special meeting. I'm wrong? I mean, I don't know. The Brown Act is great, so. But yeah, no. I would like you guys to consider that, a research institution. I drove by Shasta Trinity Campus. I tried to put our courses there. Do you guys know what courses they offer? Nothing that will help me, period. But if I want to do research on anything agriculture, we should have a compost tea program. We should have pesticide and herbicide free. We should teach the farmers that are doing it poorly how to do it well. We should ban, grow more, and ship products that are high NPK that destroy the soils and the earth from our grow stores and teach people a better way. But we can only do this with a research institution. We'll bring in professors, we'll bring in students, we'll bring in high paying sustainable jobs. That's economic development. They'll spend money in Weaverville. They'll spend money in Hayford. They'll spend money in Trinity Center. They'll bring their families, and that's how you do it. That's how you do it sustainably. But a short term, off the hip tax with no experts behind it is a recipe for destruction. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Patrick Kahn from Down River and Sawyer. And uh, I'm just going to speak as a as a farmer, and just let you know, I don't know a lot about taxation and everything that's the intricacies in this bill, in, in what you're proposing yet. But what I think, from my perspective, is that we need to increase the level of back and forth between the county and the growers. And I sense continual sincere, lack of sincerity coming across between the two. And I think that I can guarantee that I, I am under the impression that what, it, what you guys decide now, if you bring the tax low and look at it from the perspective of the grower and the growing business here, sincerely, you'll see that this will come back to you tenfold if you make the right decisions. Instead of what I think a lot of people sense, which is putting the brakes on and and trying to collect as much as you can. I see that across the board in legal states that have done it, including like Washington. You know, you may be sitting on tens of thousands of pounds of legal weed in Trinity County. If you don't get the taxation right, it won't go anywhere. There's two ways out of this county to meet the demand, 101 and I-5. It's California, it's all that wet. So you're going to need to work regionally with your counties, the Emerald Triangle, to figure that out, processing all the licenses. You lack a lot of those licenses. So it's even more integral from a growing business to be able to work across county lines, regional lines, to find distribution, to find all the mechanisms to get this product to even the table or to the dispensary legally. And so I just encourage you to really look at what the other counties have done and look at how you can increase your farmer's stake in that by recognizing that if you slow play this a little bit, you will have no problem getting your constituents to vote for a higher tax coming. And you'll have no problem with the growers coming to pay that. Because if there's money flowing, it'll flow into the county <coughs> due to this tax. But what I hear is just kind of like, let's throw out high numbers now while the price is there who knows what the future is. The future is still going to be weed for a long time to come. This is very beginning, I think. And I think this county has resources that play into the long-term market in California. Consumption is not one of them. So I, I just encourage you to look at this from a farmer perspective, and as well as focusing some of your attention on getting more license types available in this county so there can be more possibilities for taxation. You have no retail, you have no distribution. These things you're going to need to address. And so I just think that this tax seems like ahead of its time for how much we need to focus on a permanent ordinance, more licenses, which are right there. It's spelled out in the state ordinance. We're coming up on 2018. I think that would help revenue streams and the sincerity of this county in kind of coming into a new industry with a long-term perspective, with a long-term history, and looking at how can we bring money in long-term, not just like for the next 12 to 24 months, as, the, as we all know, it's going to crash. This isn't Las Vegas. 
California is not going to run out of weed. The question is, it's going to be, what's the quality of the weed? Where's it coming from? How well is the environment protected? And how does this county play, have a stake in that? And I think it's through, through a greater understanding of taxes and slow, slowing down or lowering the threshold compared to, to the stakeholders around you in this region, Humboldt and Mendocino. They have other things going for them, and they come out with things ahead of you. So anyway, June sounds, like, sounds kind of reasonable to me coming into this not knowing anything versus November. If you go into November, you, we, there's just so much unknown about this market. I just implore you to look at it from a farmer perspective and a county who needs, you know, to get this product to the proper market. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Diane Richards from Hay Fork. It appears to me that you're trying to kill the golden goose. The thing that can make our county profitable economically, resources, it would trickle down to every faction, whether you're a um, person making sandwiches or collecting garbage. You're killing the golden goose, and it appears to be with intent. The fact that you want to run it in November doesn't fool anybody very disingenuous that you would do this because you know this is a seasonal crop this is a seasonal industry and a majority of the people that are here for instance in June won't be here in November and you know it don't look surprised Judy you know what the season is they're gone we know just by the people walking on the street and what's on the shelves of the stores so this is your intent that you believe that you won't have if you rush it through you will not have the voters there that would basically go against this because I think mostly the industry will be against this. Um, you have not provided any incentive at all for that higher end product. If you actually put in here, and I'm, and I'm with Bobby, it should be on percentage, period, because, so that it could float with the market. That, that just makes good economic sense no matter what, what it is. I don't care what it is, whether it's beef or whether it's uh, cannibal, cannabis, etc. But if you had an incentive there, for instance, that you would have maybe no tax the first two years or 50% reduced tax for organic medicinal product. That would make us the destination for the best of the best, where you know that it's pure, it's tested, it's medicine, even if you use it for recreational. You have not built in any incentive in this. Um, and also, the thing that I object to mostly, besides it being a tax, I'm very against taxes, and I've come against against taxes through the state. For instance, the use tax, we lost Amazon.com because of use tax. It's just a money grab is what you're doing right here. But my biggest complaint is that you have a criminal element built in here, and I didn't hear anybody speak to that. You're saying that it'll be a crime if you don't pay your tax. Criminal, penal, not just a, a, you know, a, a, a fine. You put in there that it's a Crime. You will make someone a criminal that they couldn't pay their tax. Um, things happen to people. You know, they could get sick or have an accident or whatever, and they didn't pay their tax. So you're going to make them criminal. And then, as far as saying that you, the tax lien would go on the property, that's actually ludicrous. I've been a business person for a long time. If I didn't pay my taxes on my business, it would not go to my landlord, the person that owns the property. I don't even see where you have a basis for that. And you say you don't want to take away people's property? Yes, because you're basing it on the, your, the lien on the property, not on the business. You should be basing this on lien on the business, like the rest of the state does. So I, I just feel like you're really shoving this down our throat, and your intent is very clear. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hi, Everett Harvey Weaverville. God, I don't know what to say. So much is, is uh, riding on all this, and so much has been said. Uh, first, I want to make an observation. Uh, recently, I've been going to Tops in later hours, and I noticed the doors are locked. And uh, the reason is, is they can't allow people in and out of there due to the amount of stuff being stolen. And uh, so the, the life in the county has changed. Uh, I think I've been preaching a bit about here's a revenue stream to try to deal with some of the issues that the county has to deal with. Uh, 
you can't shut off this res revenue stream and get any better. Uh, when I, my first thought when I came in here was how do you guys come up with these numbers for the various taxes? I didn't see any reasoning. And I think you've got to put out a very simple, reasonable plan that can be <coughs> presented to people. And you want it to pass. You, you know, you guys got to vote on it, but also the public has to vote on it. So you want to make something that's really going to pass. And uh, that's tough here because I remember I was absolutely flabbergasted when the TOT, the transit occupancy tax, the motel tax, the tax that people from out of the county pay, failed. It seemed absolutely ridiculous to me. But there's a lot of people here who don't want to pay taxes. I'm one who is willing to pay taxes. A lot of those who don't want to pay taxes say, well, if we pay taxes, it's just, just mismanaged. And so, you know, but this is sort of like, well, if I've got lousy food, I might as well not buy any new food or something. Uh, somehow you've got to come up with a reasonable, simple plan that you can explain, that you can get everyone, including the growers, but also the non-growers, the people who don't vote for a TOT tax. Um, I don't know what else to say. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Larry Winter from High Palm. And to begin with, I love irony. And it just really struck me today, <coughs> pledging allegiance to the flag and then conspiring to violate federal law <laughs> under the guise of county government. Isn't that odd? <laughs> um, so to the matter at hand, you know, I understand you have a, an incubator operation in Hay Fork to incubate, to help start new businesses with lower taxes, if any, or low rent. Um, the point of the incubator is to create business, create employment. And so I think <clears throat> that we need to be looking at this industry in the same way where it's at in its infancy. To create a stable economy here before you start implementing too many roadblocks on us or, or, or financial restraints. Um, I'm, I'm, I think we're too far ahead with this tax. You know, we're taxing things that are not permitted in this county right now, like nurseries and dispensaries. Why is that in a tax bill when we don't, those don't exist? And so I think that, um, I think we should go back to the drawing table. I think there should be some public hearings that we can get more input. There's a lot of people with ideas, and I think that the time is not that crucial. We're going to go a 50% tax next year, 2018, no tax on the uh, cottage industry. So it's not like it's a big financial loss if we hold back and, and try to do it right to where everybody's on the same page. Um, one thing was mentioned earlier by one of the speakers on the cost to the county of cannabis growing. Well, the, the benefit has to be said too. You drive through Hay Fork, before this industry picked up, it's a big difference with what it used to be like when the mill closed down. It's huge. You know, I imagine the sales receipts the county receives from the grow stores, from supermarkets, from Bailey's is a huge income to this county already. And so I think that needs to be stated too. But one thing that would be helpful is if there is an accounting of where this money is going to go. If you have to go with the supermajority, if you designate money to a certain percentage to law enforcement, a certain percentage to this, <coughs> that might still pass if you can show the voters that this is what we're going to spend the money on. And, and not just go into the general fund, and then we don't know what will happen. Um, and so I'm, I'm also in favor of a percentage tax. But my main point is I think we need to talk more with the people in the industry 
to try to hammer something out. And I just have one question, John. Did you work with anybody in the industry in developing this tax plan? Yep. Who was it? I'm not going to go into that right now. I talked to Liz one time when we met, and they wanted about 7% or something. What? Uh, that was at Larry, um, <coughs> with Larry last was I don't recall ever suggesting any percentage. I could tell you all day about the market May I continue? Type. It was um, at Joseph and Susan Bauer, Bauer's house. I had no input on this measure. Not this measure, period. no, before I was asking around to find out what what and are they, they part of the ad hoc committee? What were they part of the ad hoc committee? The ad hoc committee was not formed. And so you had this idea before the ad hoc committee was formed. I've been trying to bring forward taxation since 2014, 15, 2015, and thank you very much, Larry. I would love to see this money not go to the general fund. If we could just keep it separate, it would be great to see what the cannabis is contributing to so that the community as a whole can get a better picture of what this industry is doing here. Um, also, you know, maybe there was some crazy creative way we could graduate the penalties. So not this first year maybe we're putting liens on people's properties and doing these things, but maybe give it two years for people to figure out how this is actually going to work. Um, and this is just a minor tip, but LEAF really isn't worth the percentage that it is calculated at, as your fee schedule suggests. It's like 5 to 10 percent of the flower price in reality, so maybe we could bring that number down. Thank you. Mike Ware, hey, Portman. Um, I graduated in the top 5% of my class with an MBA from USC. Okay, so I have a business degree. I have some background. What are you guys doing? You have less than, let's say, let's say that you have 500 permitted people, okay? You have less than a quarter of the people that are actually going to be producing and selling marijuana. Okay, so you're going to penalize the people that you have permitted by taxing them on top of this. Okay? so. This is something that makes no sense at all, because all you're doing is encouraging the black market to grow and encouraging the people that are already permitted to just fall out of it, because that's all you're doing. Is you're causing them to more and more and more fees for the people that are willing to step up. You haven't allowed enough people. You haven't allowed a reasonable amount, a reasonable way of permitting. You know, it's, it's very selective, very aggressive. You know, you haven't gathered the intent that the, that the state went after, which was to bring as many people as they possibly could under this, into this license. You know, to get as many people, because that's where you get your numbers from. The mass people, if you could get 80% of the people to participate in this, that would be great. But your fees that you're charging, and now you're charging a tax, all of these things are punishing the people that you've already permitted. So if you're encouraging the black market, if you're, your intent is to encourage the black market, you're doing a great job of it. Because I hear more and more people say, why should I? Why should I do this? And now you're talking about taxing these people too? Hmm, bad idea. If you do tax them though, the percentage is the way to go. You know, history has shown that throughout every industry. You know, percentages are way better to go. And, you know, it's not right that you can keep considering this as a New industry. This is not a new industry. If anyone knows it, you know, you guys know it far too well. This is not a brand new budding industry. This is an industry that's been in here. You know, take a little look at the black market industry and follow it a little bit more after something that's already been successful. You know, the reason that this county has done so well is because the product is so much better here than any place else. Central Valley, any place else. You know, you can produce mass market. Uh, marijuana out of Mexico, that's what we're going to do. And this is the salvation for this county. This is the salvation. It's done right, but you're not going about it right. You're not bringing in the people. You know, you've got to capture a lot more people than 500. 
you know, 500 gross is just not enough. Thank you. Hi, John Brown from Junction City, and uh, a few things. Uh, Keith's idea of a flat rate uh, bringing greater value to the higher end product, which really is the essence of the Trinity brand. It's our, it's our only hope as a community moving forward. Um, after considerable time thinking about it and some discussions, I, I, I think I agree. I think that's a, that's a good idea. Uh, it took me a little while to get there uh, mentally, but, uh, but I do see the benefits of it. Uh, I think the overall rate uh, is reasonable, but could be adjusted down a little bit. I'd like to see something closer to $10 a pound from the distributor, $10 per pound on flour, $5 a pound on leaf, and 2% instead of 2.75 on transactions that are generated here in the county um, and clothes. Um, just simpler numbers and, uh, and a little bit less of a barrier to entry. Um, the, uh, the issue with uh, the money's going into the general fund or be earmarked, I think is real simple. Trinity County people are very independent folk that don't like to pay taxes for stupid stuff. And, uh, but it, my understanding is <clears throat> for monies that go into the general fund, it only requires 50% plus one vote for it to pass. But for things to be earmarked require a two thirds majority to pass, which we'll never get in Trinity. So just the, practicality of it, I think, pulls us into the general fund, if anything. Um, I also think that there's some friction, unnecessary friction here on the board. We're all from the same community. We all love the same things about Trinity. We all feel this is the most special place on earth or we wouldn't be living here. And, you know, the, the grand jury, you know, talked a little bit about this, and I would like to see some healing on the board. I, I would like to see Chairman Finn and Bobby find a way to work closer together in this ad hoc, ad hoc capacity and uh, and a more inclusive demeanor. And uh, I think something as important as taxation on this cannabis industry here in Chan Trinity really does really does mandate some serious consideration and a lot of community input. You know, there's on one hand we might not ever get anything passed unless we pass it right now, but. This is a really big deal, and it affects, I think, every household in our county. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I want him to repeat something I didn't hear. He just wants you to repeat something you didn't hear. Can you repeat your numbers? Because I captured some of them, but not all of them, I think. I'd like to see a ten per, $10 per pound at the distributor level, $10 per pound on Flour, five dollars on leaf, two percent on clones and retail transactions that originate from here. Thank you. Sorry. Any other public comment? Seeing none, I'm going to bring it back to the board. You have some discussion. Okay. Great. Uh, how about seven? Welcome back. I'm late. Good afternoon. Sorry about that. Welcome back. I'm late. I'm going to call the meeting back to order. had some uh, math com comments here. Um, a lot of what I heard is fear. A lot of people don't understand what we're describing. Uh, I think we minimize other issues, but uh, a lot of the considerations that were asked for were absolutely put in this. Uh, somebody said there was no incentives, and we just went through and put an incentive in. Uh, but I, I want to explain some of the counties around us. So I look at other counties around us. Um, so for 10,000 square foot, um, Sonoma County, 
which we were all told was terrible, $100,000. Um, for Mix, Grow, and Humboldt, it's $20,000, or 10,000 square feet. Mendocino, who, by the way, has two permits uh, issued, is $9,000. The Santa Rosa, who we were told that was a great thing, that's $5,000. And ours would be $3,600. So a lot of these, a lot of your concerns were already put in. Uh, Bobby, and I know I, I threw out a 10% number that was just off the cuff, so I'm not holding that to her, but that would be $36,000. Point so, of order. Where is that? Could you just break down where that $3,600, like what you're calculating that on? Your number of twelve hundred, three dollar or three pounds a plant, just a nice rough <coughs> number. So this is an outdoor model only, not mixed light. It's well, it is a point of use, but so some are going to get lower, some are going to get higher. I, I get it. So mixed light, well, you know, well, apples and apples, mixed light is uh, 10,000 in Sonoma in uh, Humboldt County. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just only three times as much as Trinity. So I know there doesn't seem to be much trust in the GROW community, but this whole thing has been designed and looked at and gone through with, with the intentions that people had put out and the concerns. So with that, I just hopefully in the future, we all bring our calculators and can work on these numbers. Thank you. Supervisor Chadwick. I'm glad to hear you say in the future, because I, what I heard was that mostly we don't understand it. And it's a special meeting. We had 24 and a half hours, I believe, if you had the full minutes and moments and I don't think any of these farmers have had time to take them to their CPA or their tax person. So I'm really glad to hear that there's a, a future. Why is this all even relevant? Why, why is what I'm saying even relevant? Because to succeed in our community and go forward, we have to remember and look at the things that we've done wrong. We've done a lot of things wrong. We've done things without the input of the public. This is only our second meeting. We made great headway today. Just think what we could do if we could work together and craft together. Thank you, Bobby. Judy? Uh, no, Chair, I'm ready to make a motion. Um, there's, uh, you know, I appreciate the board members' uh, input clarification as well as some uh, issues raised by the public that have been addressed, and some things have raised questions for me. So that I don't have at my fingertips to um, verify and um, would like to make the motion that we table this to a, another day. It could be next week, it could be next month. Um, I just, we would certainly let you know as chair and ad hoc, but I, I'd like to explore a couple things. Do I have a second? I'll second that. <coughs> Any subsequent? So I wonder if we can get a second on the subsequent. <laughs> I will I just say it won't you, be tomorrow because I don't have time to look what I need to look for. Uh, it could be next week, and again, it could be two weeks from now. I don't have a date, but I, I need some time okay. to verify. A Thank things. you for your frankness. Um, I have a first and a second. Uh, Wendy Cole. Uh, is there any other discussion? Seeing none. So to be clear, it's tabled not to a date specific. Right. Why don't you go ahead and pull the board? Supervisor Chadwick? Yes. Supervisor Morris? Yes. Supervisor Groves? Yes. And Supervisor Penley? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, board. I made test sheets. That's yeah, fine. Thank you. We're moving on to closed session. Yes. Let me read the item. I have uh, 2.1, Government Code Section 54954.5-E, Public Employment of Employee Pony, Appointment County Administrative Officer. Is there any public comment regarding closed session? Um, I don't know. 
<laughs> this is Matt Josh in Ocean City. Um, I don't know if you guys have any potentials, but go get one. One is better than none. We need a CAO. Thank you so much. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> Okay, that's great. You're adjourned? That's what I want to hear. We're taking a break. Okay. Okay. Closed session, closing out, closed session, reporting out, closed session, item 2.1, Government Code Section 54954.5, E, Public Employee Appointment, County Administrative Officer. Direction was given to staff. Thank you very much. <laughs>